Hello everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be creating three coordinating holiday cards using some of the same Scrappy Tales products on all three cards. So I'll be using the A7 Music Note Cover Plate, the Nutcracker Spinner, the Christmas Tree Spinner. I'm actually only going to use the presents from this die set. And then I'll use a sentiment from the Christmas Icons 4x6 stamp set. And then I'm going to use two of the three new stencil sets from the latest release. I'm going to be using the Music Note Swirl layering stencil set and then the Music Note background stencil. So here I have all of my pieces pre-cut down to the size of each die that I plan on using for my Nutcracker. I chose to make him very detailed, so I used all of the dies included in the set, but you can definitely exclude some of the dies if you don't want to paper piece or do a whole lot of die cutting. You can really make them as simple or as complex as you want, but I personally love paper piecing. It's like a puzzle for me, so I find it very enjoyable. The issue I had is I didn't have the colors of cardstock that I wanted to use for my color scheme across all three cards. So I ended up coloring some white cardstock with my Distress Oxide inks. This one is Broken China. I use this color for the Nutcracker's jacket and crown, and I am creating three of the exact same Nutcrackers, so that's why you see three of each die. For the pants of the Nutcracker, I'm going to color that in pink, but later on I change it to purple. And there's actually not a lot of pieces that I have to ink up because the majority of them are going to be silver. This piece of cardstock I'm coloring is for the Nutcracker's boots. And you can see that these are very small scraps of cardstock, so I'm not wasting a lot of ink here. And I love that my Nutcrackers are going to match the inks I plan on using for my background because I am going to be using the exact same inks on all three cards. So um, the purple elements are details on his jacket as well as his belt and the top part of his sword. So this would obviously be faster if you had colored cardstock ready to go, but all of my colored cardstock is super bright and I wanted something a little bit softer. So the pink color I'm using is Spun Sugar. The purple is Wilted Violet. Here I'm coloring the cheeks of the Nutcracker pink as well as the top part of his crown. And that's really all the ink blending I needed to do. The rest is either white, cream, or silver. So I cut the base of the Nutcracker from cream cardstock and I'm just going to start paper piecing him from the top or from the bottom to the top. So I'm starting with his boots. I added some silver behind the buttons of the boots and I also added some silver detail to the top. All of these dies are included and if you use all of them, you can create a super detailed nutcracker. Here I'm adding the shadow for his pants, which I cut from white cardstock. Here's where I decide that I want his pants to be purple instead of pink. Because his boots were pink, I felt like a different color for his pants would be better. So I just went over the same die cut with my wilted violet ink, and that did completely cover the spun sugar. And then I'll glue the pants over the white shadow layers that I added onto his legs. Even the little sword has two pieces to it, so I added the handle to the silver sword, and then I'm going to work on his jacket. There's a lot of teeny tiny little details on this jacket, and here's where I'm talking about you don't really have to add every single detail. You can keep his jacket with just the belt and the shoulder pads, and that's it but I love that some of the elements I was able to cut from silver cardstock to really make him shine. So here I'm going to add his purple belt, and there's even a little detail for the center of the belt that I'm going to add with silver cardstock. I will also add his beard and some silver buttons to the jacket. And the die cut over to the left gives you an idea of where to place all of these elements, and there's also cut lines inside it so you know where to add your pieces. 
So that is very helpful to know where to glue everything. I'm going to cut off the little ovals at the bottom of the jacket because when I was designing this die set, I thought that those would be his hands. So I wanted the cream to show through. I die cut his crown three times, once from silver, once from the broken china, and once from the spun sugar so that I can create a three colored crown. Definitely don't have to do that, but I thought that was really cute. Then I'll add his hair, which I die cut from white cardstock, as well as his eyeballs and his mustache. Before I glue the mustache, I'm going to glue his pink cheeks. And the die even includes a little tiny pupil and nose for this nutcracker. So here I'm gluing the eyes and the nose. And then I die cut the pupil from black cardstock. There's even some eyebrows that I added to him. And I would say to glue these nutcrackers, each one took about 15 minutes. And then to die cut them, I really didn't feel like it took very long, especially if you were to just use colored cardstock. So we're going to start card one, which is going to be an A7 card because I plan on using the A7 music note cover plate die. And I want to use those same inks for the background of my nutcracker. I'm starting with spun sugar at the bottom. In the middle, I'm adding wilted violet. And then at the very top, I'm going to add broken china. I'm using some blender brushes that I bought off of Amazon. I'm going to go over each color twice. So here I see that I have to pull the blue down a little bit more. I did add a little bit more wilted violet in the center. And then I'm going to splatter some water to the background as well as some pearlescent watercolor. I may have went a little bit crazy with the water and the pearlescent watercolor, but I think it ended up looking pretty. It has a gorgeous shine to it. All right, so I have my die. I'm going to just cut that out. And once you cut this piece, you get a ton of these little music notes that pop out of the die. I'm going to keep those and use them for my third card. They're awesome shaker bits, which I'll showcase in the second card design. So I always keep these teeny tiny little music notes. They're great little embellishments. You would be surprised how many different ways you can use them. So here you can really create three cards, one with the music note cutouts, one with the cover plate, and then one with the centerpiece that cuts out from the cover plate. I end up using the centerpiece and the frame for my first card, but I just wanted to show that you can create basically three cards from one die if you wanted to. I'm going to be using the large music notes that come in the A7 music note cover plate as well as the violin. I thought I would also use the French horn, but I ended up only using the violin. And all of those are included with that A7 music note cover plate. I think that those instruments add a really great value to this die set. You also get a harp and a trumpet included. They're all a really great, nice, large size because this is an A7 cover plate. And I always, with all of my dies, try to utilize as much metal space as I possibly can in order to give you guys the best value for your money. And I think that this set can definitely work beyond Christmas, especially if you know someone that plays any of the instruments that are included. I think they could also work as great birthday cards, especially the cover plate that I'm using here. So this is definitely one of my favorite dies from the latest release. I've used it three times already. And it's super detailed, but not, there's no fuss with it. You know, there's no paper piecing. It all just die cuts for you. Those little music notes pop out and your card is essentially halfway made. You just need to have some kind of centerpiece, which is in this case, my nutcracker. And you saw there that I did add two layers of white, 110 pound white cardstock. I die cut them from the same 
A7 cover plate and added them behind my ink blended one just to add some dimension. Here's that centerpiece that die cut from the die. I trimmed it down to be an eighth of an inch smaller so that there would be a white border all around. I thought that the white would break up the, the busy blended background and I really love how that turned out. So here is my A7 card base. The cover plate is a quarter inch smaller, so you're going to have a white border all the way around. And then I'm going to glue the piece that die cut in the center completely flat, just with my ATG tape. So here, originally I wanted the Nutcracker in the center, and you guys saw that when I was kind of figuring out the layout, I had it originally in the center with the violin, on the bottom left and the French horn on the top right. I think that was a beautiful design and if you wanna do that, do that. But I, for some reason, decided to move the violin and the Nutcracker over to the bottom right. That way I had a little bit of extra space for my larger music notes over to the left. I am adding two layers of white behind the music notes and then the top layer is some silver glitter card stock. I think this added some more silver to the card and brought it outside of the Nutcracker. I'm going to glue the violin flat with my art glitter glue and I am going to add two heavyweight white die cuts behind my Nutcracker. I think I did that off screen. You can also see that there's some scrap pieces of white over to the left side of him. That is so that everything is level because the left side is flat and the right side is popped up. So this makes everything flush and even. So I went ahead and added those music notes and that will complete my first card. I didn't add any embellishments just because I felt like it was a pretty busy design already. I love how this one came together, super pretty. I love the silver accents and the silver, silver pearlescent watercolor also added a really pretty shine. So for my second card, I'm going to be creating a mini slimline. This Nutcracker is a nice size. You probably saw that with the A7 card, but he's actually five and a half inches tall, and he's meant to be a spinner inside the slimline snow globe. Obviously, all of our spinners can work on flat card designs, which is what I'm doing today, but they all are five and a half inches tall, so they're really a nice size for A7 cards, and mini slimline and regular slimline cards. They are too tall, in my opinion, for an A2 card because they're the same height as an A2 card. So that's why I am creating two A7s and one mini slimline today. I'm using the same Distress Oxide inks, but I'm blending very softly. I'm using a light hand. Um, you can definitely tell from the first card where I went full, full on with the blending. This one is much softer, and I'm going to splatter water. I'm not going to splatter the pearlescent this time because I plan on adding a stencil on top. So the water kind of just lightened up the colors even more, which I really like. I am taking the Music Note Background Stencil by Scrappy Tails and taping it to the back of this panel, and then I'm going to use the same Distress Oxide inks with a heavier hand. I'm going to blend the ink through the stencil. I am adding the purple to the purple areas, the blue to the blue, and the pink to the pink so that everything is kind of tone on tone. But because I'm using a much heavier hand, it's going to create a really nice background. And it's also subtle because I already have that ink there. If you wanted this to be more of a bold pattern, you can use some darker Distress Oxide inks for this stenciling part but I think that this turned out really pretty. It is a six by six stencil, so I did have to shift it down for the bottom part. And for some reason, I love watching people clean their stencils. It's very satisfying, so I left that part in. You can see that my Nutcracker is going to be right in the center and that background isn't too distracting. It just adds a little bit of interest. So I thought I would try my hand at creating these very popular flat shaker cards you guys know I'm all about the trends. I'm a little bit late to this one, but I'll be honest, I was kind of intimidated by it because people generally like to use packaging for their flat shakers. And I encourage you guys to do that if that's all you have. 
but I personally prefer acetate because it's stiffer and it doesn't buckle or wrinkle at all. So I'm kind of doing some experimenting here. I went ahead and cut this acetate to be an inch larger than my slimline panel. Then I scored each side at half an inch. And then what ends up happening is you create these square corners. I went ahead and cut those off. And you want to be careful. You don't want to cut too far in. Otherwise, your shaker bits are just going to fall out. So I'm cutting right up to the score line. That's why it's so close to the camera. I'm making sure that those are cut off perfectly. And then you're left with this piece that you can just fold upwards behind your blended panel. And this ended up working really well. I don't know why no one else does this. I think it could be because some acetate could, when you score it, just break, depending on how fragile it is. I use overhead sheets, so it's technically not acetate. I've never worked with real acetate before. So I don't know if this would work for everyone, but I will link to the overhead sheets that I use. They're very inexpensive and I get them from Amazon. I do encourage you guys to try what you have. And like I said, the original flat shaker, which I'm not sure who invented them, but they're genius. Those are created with just regular packaging. So do what you're comfortable with. But I thought that this was super easy. So I would try it if you have acetate and see if it works. So being that this was my first flat shaker card, all I knew was that I wanted to use flat shaker bits. So I'm using the white music notes that die cut from the first card from the cover plate. Remember, I had two white die cuts layered behind my ink blended ones, so that's what these are. I thought the white ones popped off the background more than the ink blended ones. I also added some iridescent confetti, which is also relatively flat. I added my scored acetate on top of the panel. I squeezed the center and quickly flipped that bad boy over. Now, my life would have been easier if I didn't remove the backing on my double-sided tape, but it ended up working out okay. And then all you have to do is fold those bad boys under. On some of the sides, I did have to trim it just a bit so that it was a, a tighter squeeze, but it ended up working out perfectly, like way better than I thought. And what's interesting is it's almost like a pillow. Like it does kind of pop up. There is definitely some air in there, which I don't think is supposed to happen, but nothing fell out, so I was like, okay, I'm fine with that. Let's embrace the pillow. And because it kind of puffs up, it allows my shaker bits to move like a regular shaker card. You can see that these are moving really well, and I argue that you can even put sequins in there and it will still move just as well. So this worked out so nice. It was just one of those craft days where you were willing to possibly mess up an entire card just to see if it would work, not anticipating that it would, and it does, and that just made my day. So anyway, now this card needs a sentiment. Here is the Merry Christmas sentiment from the Christmas Icon stamp. I used my Broken China Distress Oxide ink to stamp it out, and here I'm using a stitched banner die to die cut it out. I did have to cut it out twice because it is a slimline banner, but this did give me a perfect banner for my sentiment. So I'm going to add that below my nutcracker. And I just love that this is an edge to edge shaker. I mean, this was definitely faster and I would argue easier than creating a regular shaker. So I might just keep doing this from now on. So if you haven't tried these flat shaker cards yet, definitely try them out. They're a lot of fun. If you want to try my method, maybe uh, tag me, message me, let me know if it worked. Otherwise, you can use up your old packaging, recycle, and that will work just as well. So you can see that I added some more white music notes and glued them to the acetate just for some more embellishment. I love, like I said, these little music notes can be embellishments, shaker bits, keep them. You can definitely use them. So I am going to add two white layers of die cuts behind my paper piece nutcracker just so that he can pop up a bit. And because it's a flat shaker card, you can keep adding dimension to it, which is so fun. 
All right, so here's my mini slimline card base. I did cut this panel to be one eighth of an inch smaller all the way around, so there is a teeny tiny white border. And then that will finish off my second card. I think this one is my favorite just because I love how everything came together smoothly. I am going to add some silver pearls to this card as a finishing touch. I did like that the first card had a little bit of silver so I wanted to include that in card two. And I am using the exact same dies on all the cards, the exact same colors. And I think that's a great way if you're maybe in or experiencing art block, if you wanna get back into crafting but you don't wanna be overwhelmed by products and inks and so many different things, why not create three different cards but they all use the same supplies? I find that I really have been enjoying that lately. So for my third card, I'm going to be using the Music Note Swirl Stencil. And these stencils are labeled. So this one is labeled Stencil 1. And this creates the sheet music lines. Again, I'm going to use the same Distress Oxide colors that I have been using. And just randomly apply the ink. You can see I'm very loose with it. I'm not blending Perf uh, perfectly. In fact, I'm going a little bit too aggressively and I did smudge some areas, but I knew that my nutcracker was going to cover some of it, so I didn't care that much. There's also a layer two that I knew would also cover some of those non-perfectly blended areas. The second layer adds some music notes to the swirl and I went ahead and taped it to the back of my card again and I'm using a finger dauber and my Versamark ink to apply the ink through the stencil. This is a sticky clear ink that allows you to heat emboss. So these music notes I'm going to silver heat emboss. It's going to add a really pretty shine. I love layering stencils because you can use different colors on each layer or you can also heat emboss. And this ended up looking really pretty. I have seen one guest designer actually just use layer one on a card. She created a beautiful wispy snowflake background. So if you want to see that, head over to the Scrappy Tales Instagram page. I'll be posting it in the next couple days. So here I have some of the presents that I die cut from the Christmas tree spinner die set. I die cut these from the leftover ink blended cardstock I made from card one and silver glitter cardstock. The bows are included separately in the set if you want to paper piece the bows. For this present, I wanted the bow and the ribbon, so I'm just cutting from the present itself and gluing it onto a silver glitter one. And I thought that these would be a nice little touch to go below my nutcracker. So on this square present, I just added the bow. I didn't bother with the ribbon. I just wanted to have some variety. I am adding a single die cut behind them to pop them up. Usually I add two white layers, but because my nutcracker has two white layers behind him, I thought one was good enough for the presents. For these music notes, these are the large ones that are included in the A7 music note cover plate. Again, I die cut them from the leftover ink blended paper. I am adding a single white die cut behind them and I'm offsetting a silver glitter die cut behind them to create a two-toned music note. It adds a really pretty look to them. I also have the ink blended music notes from card one that cut out from the cover plate. I am adding some of the leftover white die cuts to add dimension behind them. Definitely don't have to do that. I just figured I have them. I might as well just layer them behind the blended music notes just to add some more interest. So here I'm adding my white nutcracker layers. And I know some people don't like to do this. Ever since I started doing it, I just can't stop because I love the look of it. It does add a substantial amount of time to the card making process, but I think it's worth it. All right, so here I glued one present right on top of his boots. I did have to add a little bit of foam tape so that it was even with the nutcracker. And then the rest of these I'm going to kind of tuck behind him 
It just kind of helps ground him and adds a little bit of interest to the bottom of the card. And then he, you can see here how those silver embossed music notes turned out. I think it's so cool. So here are the larger music notes. I just glued those to some of the white space. And then the smaller ones, I'm going to glue a few of them directly on top of the silver heat embossed music notes. Some of these are cut from the silver glitter card stock as well, just to add some more sparkle to the card. And what's interesting is that some of these silver embossed music notes are the same size as the music notes that cut from the cover plate. So some of these music notes are completely covered, which is kind of cool. So you definitely don't have to do this, but I thought it would be a creative way to use those leftover cutouts. All right, so I'm going to mat this on some black cardstock. I did not add a sentiment to card one or card three, so I will probably just stamp a sentiment on the inside of the card. And then here's my A7 card base, and that is going to finish off my third card design. So thank you again for watching another super long video. I promise you guys I'll have a shorter one coming out soon. And we do have a design team call for Scrappy Tales going on right now. It's until the 27th. So if you want to join the Scrappy Tales design team next year, um, I will have a link on information on how to apply in the video description. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving and Black Friday weekend. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I post my next video. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye.